Welcome back to our video series on the play framework using Scala. We're going to continue talking about Scala.js in this video, but now we want to use Scala.js with our play framework code that we've written before. Basically bring everything together so we have a server and a client that are both using Scala. We've actually always kind of had this in place in our project. Uh, I've gone back to our main page, not one of our various task lists here, and you'll note that it already said stuff about Scala.js. Our original application had an index, and so when we pulled up that page, we go to this index and we pass in this shared message thing. The index itself has that text that's inside of there, and you'll see Scala.js is mentioned here again. In addition, the main has a Scala.js of tag in it. So remember, index calls main. Main is being used for all of our pages. And it has a Scala.js tag, which actually brings in some Scala.js code. Now, I did have to change this. So our build.sbt, everything we've been doing so far has been in the server. We have just lived in this server directory. That's where everything was that we have played with uh, previously in, in the videos, making our task lists and whatnot. But there is also a setup for a project called client and another one for a project called shared. And the client is for Scala.js code. And the name here is play videos client. So I had to make it so that this matches there. Okay, and so this winds up being the file that is output by the fast ops when this runs. And indeed, if we go and we look at the source code here, you will see that down here there is a versioned assets for the play videos client fast ops. And if we click it, you should see the type of code that we are used to from fast ops. Okay, it's Definitely JavaScript, um, but it's not the type of JavaScript you'd want to, to work on. It's clearly being uh, created by a, uh, a program. Okay, so we've had this here all the time. And turns out the code that's being run here has been sitting up in our client directory the whole time. There is under client source. Uh, Actually, this is, I don't like this package. Let's call this play Scala. And let's make a new folder. Play Scala. Let's move that file over. And delete the previous directory there. Okay. Um, so what this is doing is it does what we've seen before. We're calling document. Now this one didn't import DOM document. It just imported DOM. So we have to call it DOM document, get by ID of that element that was specified here inside of the index.html. And it sets the context to it to something that's called a sh in shared message. Now there's nothing magical about shared message here. Uh, Turns out shared message is just inside of our other project, shared, source main Scala shared. There is a file called shared message.scala. It is an object and it has a def in it that says it works. Server is code that is being compiled to the JVM. It's compiled to, to JVM bytecode and it is where play is being run. Client is running and I actually am unhappy with the red coloring on our client. Uh, it's possible in that name moving stuff, I messed something up. Uh, nope, nope, that seems to be happy. And that might, might make this happy now that it can find stuff. Uh, client is compiling everything to Scala.js. So the output of everything here is the, the JavaScript code. Shared is doing both. Okay, so down here, the stuff that we put inside of shared, in fact, you'll see these, there's these directories, .js and .jvm. Everything we put inside of here has to compile to both the JVM and the JavaScript. 
which does somewhat limit what we can put inside of here. You can't use any uh, Java type calls. You can't use any JavaScript dot calls. So DOM dot document that couldn't be in shared. Um, Java dot io dot file or anything from the the normal Java dot uh, libraries would have a hard time being inside of shared. So we can only use stuff that compiles well across both of them. But a great thing to put there is data. And that's what we're going to see is we will use the shared space for putting our data, particularly things we want to communicate back and forth between the client and the server. So I just want to make it clear that this is actually what's doing the work for us. And this is the Scala.js that's that's happening. Print line, this is in Scala.js. Okay, just a simple print to verify that that is what is going through. And if we refresh this page, there we get it. This is in Scala.js. Okay, so that code is being executed in here. Um, now, one of the challenges that we have here is this code looks for that and calls something on it. Now, we have a bunch of other routes in our app right now. This is just one of them. This was the first one right here. But let's say that we went to say login one. Okay, so instead of going to the original one, we go to login one. You'll notice that now we have an error and that is because we were trying to call con uh, text content on something that it went to look up. So this tried to find this thing and it didn't find it didn't find it and so this is undefined and we're trying to call a text context uh, or text content on that and that doesn't work how could we prevent this well the way that the scholar is going to work now a lot of time you're going to use this in a single page app type of configuration but if you're using it across multiple pages right you know by default this is calling the same main for all of your pages the way this is structured if you want to have tags that only exist on certain pages, you should protect the uses of those. So in this case, I can make sure that this thing exists. So if it's not equal to null, then I'm going to do this. Okay. And only in the situation where it's not equal to null. That way here on our login page, this will now behave properly. Okay, so we don't we don't get those errors. It's only the page, our top level page, that actually has that message that, that this will be called on. Um, and again, that's because this main is being shared across our entire site. When we're doing single page apps, not an issue. Everything is happening from one site. But but in, in the situation that we already have set up here, I want to put this in to, to protect it so we don't get those little spurious error messages everywhere. So we've kind of looked at how our project is organized here. We have a client, we have a server, we have the shared. Previously, we've only played with server. The client and the shared, though, are now going to play a significant role now that we're doing stuff with Scala.js. So we want to, uh, we'll come back in the next video and we will start talking about how we can actually use this to, to implement one of our task lists using kind of basic DOM manipulation, but doing it through Scala.js.